Mike Trout here. I'm in Florida searching for assisted living facility for my father. And I want to do a video on the process that I am basically developing myself to assist me in moving him into assisted living. Because moving an elderly out of his home into an assisted living facility is an extremely difficult thing for a number of reasons. First off is this is his home right here. He's used to it. He's lived here for the last 30, 40 years, or maybe even longer in your case. And ultimately, people inherently resist change. He's comfort here. He's comfortable. And you're taking the person you love and moving him into an unknown. And the thing is, we've all heard these horrible, horrible stories of assisted living facilities. And the last thing you want to do is take your loved one into one of those homes. So the current method is to, to start um, dragging your dear father, mother around with you and look at all these places. And that's your first big mistake. Don't do that. Another mistake is to give out your actual home address and your home phone number to these people because then they're going to basically ring, ring, ring constantly. And that's another form of torture. Because once you start going here, their marketing directors get hold of things. And believe me, <laughs> they don't let go. It's like basically, you know, they're on your jugular and they will call and send you email after email after email. So set up a Google Voice account before you start this process. Now, a cool thing of Google Voice account is you can set it up to forward to your actual phone number or in my case, forward to my smart device, maybe your phone or something else. So that way, you know, you don't have to have your home phone ringing all the time and driving you crazy, right? That's just an added frustration. You're gonna get emails after emails after you visit these places saying, hey, how was it? Bugging you, bugging you, bugging you, bugging you. And you just have to say, hey, phase one, which I'm on right now, is looking myself. Do not drag your loved one along with you to look at all these facilities because the majority of the ones that you look at, you're not going to wanna to see. And the process is just going to end up frustrating the loved one by dragging them along. So go there, meet. Um, there's some great resources uh, available to you and I'll put some links to them below that I've gotten and that you can actually just click on. I'll set it up as an open Google Doc um, that you can then print out and you can start assessing these places. The key things that you're looking for yourself is smell. Um, does it smell like urine? Does it smell like old people, All right? Because, you know, that means that they're not cleaning, they're not changing, they're not doing the work they're supposed to do. It's the number one thing is your nose. The second thing is your eyes. Look around. Does it feel like a hospital? Does it look too insensitive? Are the people smiling? Are they just lingering around? Are the staff engaging with the people? It's very important too, for example, to look at the lunchroom. I recently went to a place and I looked at the lunchroom and I noticed they were serving roast beef. Great menu, really nice menu. And the funny thing, or not the funny thing, the thing that caught my attention is actually I was going along with an, a friend of my dad who's in, who's very vibrant. She's still, you know, in her, in her 80s, but she's extremely vibrant. Her name's Lori. And um, because the salesperson was talking to her, it allowed me to really listen to what she was saying and also look, right? And I noticed the pattern. She kept saying, oh, we are the number one in care. We really, he, she kept stressing how much she loved and cared for her the people that uh, are in the facility. And then I noticed at the kitchen, when they were eating, that they were struggling to cut their food, right? And, and it really upset me because I know how difficult it is for my dad because he has dentures to eat meat and everything else. Like, why are they serving roast beef? And this isn't like soft roast beef. And there was one particular old lady who's really just, you know, struggling, struggling, struggling. And I, and I went, you know, after going all the way down and looking, I came all the way back and I could still see her struggling. And it just affected me in such a way. I said, listen, right there in front of the marketing, hey, can I help you cut your food, right? So I cut her food up and everything else. And so, oh, you should hire. And they were all excited, right, about uh, just about that. And it told me that this wasn't a place for my dad. And I told her that at the end of it. I said, you know what, this isn't a place and, um, you know, for, for him. So do the preliminary uh, um, visits yourself 
with an, or another elderly person who isn't ready to go in, but has the strength to go along with you, right? I have a, a great partner in that case. Um, and look for those things, the smell, how they're treating, the look, and also there's important questions that are in this document that you should be asking. Um, another important thing is what is your average rate of increase per year? Gotta grab the phone. It's probably, maybe Lori wanted to go. Yeah, it was Lori. And now she's reporting to my dad, which is great. Having another elderly companion that your father respects and loves working with you, who isn't ready to go, like a dear friend or a neighbor, is really, really, really a good thing because you can work together. The dynamics of decision making, it always, it's always good to have two people versus one. You know, there's always say that the, the, the dynamics of three. So um, you want to you, you wanna keep it down to, you want to be the point person for your family. That's the other thing, the problems with your family. So I am the point person. My sister and my brothers, they're deferring to me. They've appointed me to take care of this. So I am the exec, I'm also the executor of the will. So, and I'm the one who was raised by my dad more than anyone else in my family. So I've defaulted the factor as the person responsible. So as a family, you should pick one person to make that decision, right? Um, and then as that executor of that decision, and again, ultimately the, the decision maker is, is the person that is looking, um, is, is, is focusing on a three phase method, which I'm gonna share with you what it is, what, I've, what I'm doing. So phase one is sort through it all yourself. Phase two, is put them in for a three-day stay. Now, I've gotten a, a free three-day stay, which is great because basically I told another facility I'm not interested. As far as I'm going to go is Spring Hill. You're in Port Ritchie. I like this place in Spring Hill, so I'm definitely going to, they're on my, they're, you know, I'm, you're going to see a place that I like it, right? I'm definitely going to, you know, have them experience this place or it's going to be in one of his places that he chooses, right? Once you found that, that's great because now you can leverage that with the other ones. And you can basically say to the other ones, I'm sorry, but I like this one. I'm going to be sending them to try this one. And um, unless you're offering like a three-day free stay, and if my father turns around and says, yes, I really love it, he makes a friend there, or, you know, because ultimately it comes down to him. It doesn't come down to you. And ultimately it comes down to what he has and resources. And I'm going to do another video on that, a uh, follow-up video on how, if he's a VA, to get VA assistance and other things, because there is up to two, nearly $3,000 a month that you can get from the VA to assist in living in basically a retirement home. So that's going to be another video that I will do. So if you like that video, uh, if you like this video, you can click here and support my videos. All my videos are ad-free. All my videos, I've got over 2,000 videos. I don't know. You know, I, I live in Japan. I do a lot of videos about Japan and living in Japan. Um, and my videos are not funded by Google and ads or anything else. They're funded by my Patreon site and my, and my projects called FoundUps. So thanks a lot for watching.